Hello everyone. Welcome to Discover This. I'm Tom Walker. This is Jim Morrison. Thought we'd spend a little time today wandering around San Diego, taking a look at all the things associated with Jim Morrison and his time here. So let's see what we can find. So in 1952, the Morrisons were transferred to San Diego and they moved to this neighborhood here. This is Arnott Street and they moved to this house right here behind these bushes at 2634 Arnott Street. And this is where they lived until 1956 when they were transferred to Virginia. Uh, this is a photo of the kids shortly after they moved here in 1952. And just, you know, this is where Jim and the kids would play, you know, and Jim also apparently had joined Cub Scouts at one point. Although in later years, he would say in an interview that he was kicked out of Cub Scouts for swearing at the den mother, who I'm sure had it coming, but nonetheless, uh, against the rules. So 2634 Arnott Street is, was their home for about four years. So just down the street and around the corner from the Morrison house, is Pioneer Ocean View United Church of Christ, which back in the 1950s was Pioneer Congregational Church. And this is where the Morrisons attended their church services. And just a shot of the, the church building itself. Now, just a few blocks from the Morrison House is Longfellow Elementary School. Although, as you can see now, it's called Longfellow Spanish Immersion Magnet School, but same thing, uh, Longfellow Elementary School. This is where the Morrison kids started school in 1952 and where Jim graduated sixth grade in 1956. I'm sorry, June of 1955, Jim graduated elementary school. Now in 1954 Jim had an assignment for school and in that assignment he wrote his first poem and that poem is entitled The Pony Express and that poem is now housed in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. So in the early 1960s, the Morrisons were transferred back to San Diego. And specifically, Steve Morrison was transferred to North Island Naval Air Station. And they moved to Coronado, which is just outside of North Island Naval Air Station. And they ended up getting a house here on Guadalupe Avenue, 735 Guadalupe Avenue actually, right over here across the street. That house right there is where the Morrisons moved to. Now in 1963, Jim Morrison was still going to college in Florida and when the family moved here in the 60s early 60s he was still going to college in Florida and 
1963, he quit college or was kicked out of college, depending on which story uh, you believe. But anyway, in 1963, he came here uh, to Coronado to be with his family and to figure out what his next step was going to be. Uh, the family, the parents especially, desperately were trying to get him to go to San Diego State University. Um, Jim ended up deciding to go to UCLA and move up to Los Angeles and attend film school at UCLA. Now in 1964 uh, there's a picture of Jim and his father and I don't know if this is early 64 before he moved to LA or 1964 after he started UCLA and he came down for a visit but either way um, this picture I believe is on the bridge of the USS Bonhomme Richard and if you know that name it's because a couple years ago a uh, fire started on that ship and it ship burned for days um, and in the end the ship was had to be scrapped by the US Navy so this is the neighborhood the Morrisons lived in uh, basically the the parents lived here for the rest of their lives although Steve Morrison got some different assignments and would be gone for a couple years here and there but 735 Guadalupe Avenue is the Morrison House. So there's a story that Jim Morrison's sister has told over the years. And that story is that uh, after Jim had been in UCLA for a while, he came home for a visit here to Coronado. And he had let his hair grow and Jim's mother would not let him in the house unless he got a haircut. So Jim went and got a haircut, and according to the sister, that's probably the last haircut he ever got. Now, here's a little factoid for you for the uh, Sunday family dinner table. Um, you know, as the doors gained popularity, and at the height of their popularity, Jim had a hairstylist. So while he probably wasn't getting haircuts, you know, his hairstylist would probably trim a little here and there, but just uh, keep it styled and manageable and keep them looking good, that kind of thing. So Jim's hairstylist was Jay Sebring. If that name sounds familiar, Jay Sebring is one of the Manson family murder victims from the Sharon Tate house on Cielo Drive. So that's Jay Sebring. So just a little something to add to the mix. So this is Balboa Stadium, and on July 8, 1967, this was the site of the Doors' first concert in San Diego. Now in the 1970s, the stadium was demolished uh, because of earthquake safety standards and it's been rebuilt. However, it's rebuilt on the exact same site. So this is the field they played on right up against where the scoreboard is there, was where the stage was. And there was about 4,000 people here for that show. Again, it was pretty short because uh, they, their first album had just come out, so they didn't, they didn't have a lot of songs to play. So this is Balboa Stadium as it is today. So just another angle of Balboa Stadium, as it is today anyway. But again, there's, a, there's the field where the folks attending the concert would have been. And then the band would have been, the stage would have been set up back here where this, this building is.
So this is the community concourse in San Diego. And this is where the Doors' second concert was held in San Diego on November 4th, 1967. It was held here at Golden Hall, which is this building right here. It's about a 4,000 seat auditorium, just your standard, standard auditorium. And again, they're touring for their first album, so the set by the Doors was a little short, and so that generated few complaints but all in all just didn't went off without a hitch now this is also the site of the doors third concert in san diego on june 29th 1968 same place golden hall now this show their third concert the 1968 show was filmed in 16 millimeter film for a documentary called Feast of Friends. Uh, it came out in 1969. It's a documentary on the doors by one of Jim Morrison's friends uh, by the name of Paul Ferreira. Uh, you can find it if you look for it. Um, there's parts of it on YouTube, maybe the whole thing, but anyway, Feast of Friends. But this is the site of the third Doors concert in San Diego. Now for their fourth concert in San Diego, they were supposed to go back to Balboa Stadium on October 6, 1969. However, Jim Morrison ended up getting arrested in Miami and a number of shows were canceled, including San Diego, and that was never rescheduled. So this is the site of the Doors' fourth San Diego concert on August 22nd, 1970. Uh, this would be the Doors last performance in San Diego with Jim Morrison. This show uh, was actually bootlegged, it was recorded, and it's a kind of a fairly famous bootleg called Celebration. So you can you can find it fairly easily, but anyway, this, this show was bootlegged and I mentioned that this is the last show with Jim Morrison because maybe, if you don't know, after Jim Morrison died in 1971, the Doors still continued to perform and recorded two albums and just existed for another about two years before calling it quits. So anyway, this is the last, the last side of the Last Doors show with Jim Morrison, 1970. So just a brief segue for a few minutes here. Jim's parents, Steve and Clara Morrison, did not approve of his career choice or his lifestyle choice. In fact, right after the Doors' first album came out, Steve Morrison wrote Jim a letter that, in essence, basically said... You know, there's no talent here, you can't sing, and you need to find something else to do. That said, Jim still was their son, and later it was found that Clara Morrison had kept a scrapbook of all of Jim Morrison's magazine articles and newspaper articles, album reviews, concert reviews, and just all the things she could find related to her son. So in 1991, uh, Steve and Clara Morrison left their home in Coronado and they went to Paris, France. I believe the sister went along too, but the parents went to Paris, France and they visited Jim's grave for the first time. So about 20 years after he passed away. When they got there, Steve Morrison noted that there's no marker on Jim's grave. And for those of you that don't know, Jim Morrison's grave was unmarked for many, many years. Um, from time to time, artists would put uh, some kind of a homemade marker or uh, one artist even created a bust of Jim Morrison that was there for quite a while. But, you know, they either got stolen or the cemetery would take them down, that kind of thing, because Jim, Jim Morrison's grave was unmarked. So when Steve Morrison saw that, he paid to have a marker created 
and encased in cement, and that's the marker that's there today, um, done by his father. So that's going to do it for today, ladies and gentlemen, from the San Diego Sports Arena. Uh, one other little uh, factoid, if you want to share, uh, from Jim Morrison's sister and, and a few other people. Uh, when the Doors played in San Diego, Jim Morrison would not go on stage until people had kind of canvassed the audience to make sure his parents weren't in attendance. So, anyway, I thank you for watching this video, and we will catch you next time on Discover This.